The Guilty, out on Netflix, new film directed by Antoine Foucault, starring Jake Gyllenhaal. It's an American remake of a Danish film under the same title, uh, made in 2018. And as usual in scenarios like this, I have to ask myself, was it a remake that was really needed? The original film came out just three years ago, so it isn't even old yet. It was already pretty solid. I remember seeing it in a movie theater and really enjoying it back then. And the new version doesn't really change a lot. Um, it, it's not like a completely brand new vision. It is very much the same film still. So the only reason I can think of is to make it more accessible to the American audiences, which are notoriously resistant to movies with subtitles uh, for reasons that are incomprehensible to me. I mean, it's not that difficult to read the spoken words and uh, as, as text. And if you refuse to do that, you essentially close yourself off to all the international cinema. And newsflash, Hollywood isn't the only place where good movies are being made. Far from it. In any case, though, on paper, it is an unnecessary remake, but I decided to check it out anyway because I like Gillen Hall um, as an actor and I wanted to see how he would handle the material. And my impression is that it's actually still a good film. Um, I'm still on the fence on which version I would prefer if I had to pick one. Uh, probably still the original, mainly just because it was first. Uh, but if you want to see the film easily, and you know everyone has Netflix these days, then this is a perfectly perfectly fine option. Now, the film is conceptually interesting because it's one of the single location, single actor movies. Gyllenhaal plays a cop named Joe who was relegated to being a 9-11 uh, operator. We get a sense that he's done something wrong in the past. Um, we learn that the next day he has to go to court. But for now, he has he is stuck for the night in this call center in LA during crazy wildfires when people call all the time with all sorts of stuff. One of the calls he gets is a woman who breathes heavily and, and sobs into the speaker and then talks to the operator as she would to a child. Now, Joe uh, connects the dots and figures out that the lady has in fact been kidnapped. Uh, she's in a car, she can only pretend to speak to her child or otherwise the kidnapper will take the phone away. He then begins to carefully try and extract information from her and coordinate various other people over the phone to ensure that her life is saved. We watch almost all that through his eyes, or rather listen through his ears. The camera, with two tiny exceptions, never leaves the room and we never actually see the people that Joe is interacting with. It's just him, the headphones and the computer screens. Now this is a challenge to make a movie that is compelling with so very little elements in it. And the guilty succeeds mainly for two reasons. First of all, the tension is real. The, the way the story is presented to us and, and more and more details come to light mean that together with Joe, we are in there getting nervous about what's happening. It really is engaging and emotionally gripping. The second reason why the film works is it kind of goes hand in hand with the tension aspect and it's the central performance. Like in the original, I found it very convincing. From minute one, we get a sense that Joe has some depth of his own and he's not just an operator. His own personal life comes into play with the story. I think Gillen Hall is very good at conveying um, this, this sense that he is a complicated man and portraying his emotions and his state of mind. The anxiety and impatience that uh, has to do not just with the ongoing kidnapping, obviously, but also what he's been going through personally. Solid work from him, as usual. It also helps that the movie is not overly long, it's, it's just an hour and a half. The few minor, minor issues that I had with it mainly have to do with the changes made from the original. There is one super corny line of dialogue about broken people towards the end, which was just poor writing. As far as I remember, there's also one significant change in the story's end, which makes it less dark. At least I, I think it was it was a change. Uh, I, I don't remember exactly the original, but I, I really believe that one thing, one significant thing, was changed about the fate, the ultimate fate of, of the youngest character. Without spoiling anything, um, I think it would I would have preferred it more if we skipped the last reveal regarding that, which would that reveal makes the ending more positive. I think I'd stick with the original, which is more depressing. In general, it felt like the last ten minutes were less subtle and more heavy-handed in this American version, which would kind of be in line with the fact that American films tend to respect their audiences less 
for good reason? That's an open question. In any case, even with these flaws, The Guilty remains a very solid thriller that manages to shine in execution, doing quite a lot with very little. Uh, great central performance by Gillen Hall uh, means that the remake is a fine alternative to the original. I'm still not sold on whether it needed to exist in the first place, but it's probably as good as it could have been.